Passively investing in real estate is mostly passive, but you do need to do some upfront work before deciding to invest in a particular offering. And the best way to do that is to ask the sponsor a whole bunch of questions before you transfer your funds. When I'm considering investing in something, I ask questions about a bunch of things like the sponsor, the property manager, the property itself, the surrounding market. I wanna know about the business plan and projections. I want to know about the construction plan. I wanna know about the loan and financing. And finally, I wanna know about the legal documents. I curated 194 questions that I got from my own experience and talking to other experts. And I know that it's a lot of questions, but I like the details. And if you are also into the details, just check out the link in my description and you can also get them. But for now, I would like to focus on the top four questions that I ask about the sponsor of an investment. If all you do is ask these four questions, you'll already be well on your way to making wise investments. I'm James Furlow, providing strategies and tools for real estate investors to maximize their long-term cash flow while minimizing headaches. Thanks for watching. Question number one, what is the track record of the sponsor? So when you're asking about the track record, you're basically saying, how have you performed in the past? So some related questions might be, how many assets do they currently have under management? And what kind of properties do they like to invest in? Is it single family homes, multifamily, storage units? Is it value add projects? Are they flips? Are they wholesales? You just wanna get an idea for what have they done so far? And if they have any deals that have gone full cycle, ask about the returns for that. How did the entire thing go? And then finally, a really fun kind of follow up to the track record question is to ask about their worst deal. Find out how it went and ask about the lessons they learned from it. Question number two, how well does the sponsor communicate with investors? So a good indicator of how they communicate could be how they've already communicated with you, especially when they were wooing you to invest in a deal. That will be indicative of their communications going into the future. And you might also want to ask to see some sample reports or some other sample ways that they've talked to the people. Number three, what are the industry standards for fees and what is the sponsor charging for their fees? What I find interesting about this question is that you don't really wanna go for the lowest fee possible. You really wanna to try to find the one that has the highest value. And in this case, you wanna make sure that they're right there in the middle, because if they're really low, it could mean a couple things. It could mean A, they just don't value themselves very much, which could be a problem, or B, it's just not a very good deal. And this is one of the dials that they're turning to make the returns better for investors. On the converse side, if their fees are really high, it could just be greedy, but more importantly, I would double check all of their assumptions to make sure that they're really real and they're not being overly optimistic because at the end of the day, you don't want them to be the only ones earning money from their fees. And number four, what does your gut tell you about the sponsor? Here's the thing that you have to remember. When you're getting into a real estate syndication, you're gonna be in business with them for like five to maybe 10 years. It's a long time. And so you gotta have a good feeling about this person. Do you actually enjoy hanging out with them? I know one of the tests that people talk about is the airport test. If I was stuck in an airport with this person, would I be okay? Would I enjoy having conversations and being around them? And so that's a gut feel type of thing. There's no real way to measure it, but I think it goes a really long way to you just saying, do I trust this sponsor or not? So those are the four questions. I think they're really manageable and they help you get past that initial sales pitch and dive just a little bit deeper into understanding the sponsor and where they're coming from. I know it might seem simple, but they're really powerful questions. And if you like those, but think there's some more that you should be asking, there are. And if you wanna get my full 194 question vault, just check out the link in the description and you can have them all. And finally, if you found this video helpful, please like it. And if you'd like to get more tools and strategies for maximizing your long-term cash flow while minimizing headaches, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.